Hello and welcome back to part 3 of this tutorial series where we're making a title screen and buttons and generally handling game flow uh, in Pygame. So at the moment our example is um, a bit sparse, all we have is a quit button uh, and closing it, uh, clicking it quits our application. Uh, if you haven't followed along with parts 1 and 2 by the way, I strongly recommend you do that since we will be continuing with our example from those parts. So anyway, what we're going to do in, is flesh this out a little bit. We want to add more options to our title screen for a start, um, have, a, have a fake level, um, and then be able to return back to our title screen. So let's add those to our potential game states. Um, so we'll make title, which uh, corresponds to a title screen and something called new game which is a new game and then we need to make some quite serious changes to our main function uh, what, we're no longer going to have this sort of game loop in here where we're checking for mouse buttons instead our main function is going to become a sort of uh, game state handling function where we check what our current game state is which will be one of these and then call the corresponding functions so we need to carve most of this away, so I'm just going to delete everything underneath our screen variable. We need to create our game state. Whoops. And so we're going to start on the title screen. That's where most games start, we don't want to make a change to that. Then we're going to need a loop, which is basically going to be what checks through for our various game states. So we've got the title screen, we've got, sorry I'll tell you what, we'll just copy this line a few times a bit faster, um, check for a new game, check for quit potentially. Okay, quit is the easiest one to handle, we're just going to call pygame.quit and then we're going to return out of this function. So when we return out of main, there's nowhere else for the application to go, it just closes it. Um, we shouldn't necessarily need Pygame quit, but I found in some instances uh, it can just give you a nicer close. The window doesn't hang as much. I'm not sure if it's really required or not, but, but the documentation I think does recommend you use Pygame quit, so that's why it's there. Um, and then we're going to keep this main function quite clean. We need to call a title screen here. And that's what's actually going to be going to have a loop inside that handles our button checks. And each of these, well, our title screen is going to return a new game state request effectively. So if a button is pressed in our title screen, remember that our buttons have actions. That action we're going to feed back to uh, this function here, set it, set our new game state, and then. Uh, call the corresponding function. And then for new game we're going to have a different function which we're going to call play level. Okay, but that's all we need in main. Okay, so we'll carry on by adding our title screen function which is the first function that's going to be called uh, after main once we load the game. So this is where so this is where we're going to create our buttons um, and then we're going to have a, a, a main loop that checks whether or not uh, buttons have been clicked and draws the buttons and updates the buttons etc. So we need to start by adding some buttons which I'll just do quickly now. Okay, so that's our start button added to the main uh, to the title screen. So note that the action associated with this button is to start a new game, and we're just going to add one as a quit button as well. So I'll just copy and paste this. Quit there, 
Um, we want it to be in a slightly different location. We don't want the buttons on top of each other. Make them very difficult to push. The text should be quit, and yeah, we want we want it to have the correct action as well. So remember that this action here um, gets passed in to the initializer of the our UI element um, and is stored by it. So the update function checks if the button has been clicked, and if it has, it returns this self action. Okay, and then I'm just going to create a collection, uh, just a list to hold these two buttons. Um, just saves me repeating a bit of code in a minute, because we don't want to have to call start button, update, quit button, update, and then start button, draw, all of that kind of stuff. It's a lot handier if they're in, in a collection that we can just uh, iterate through. And then here's our loop, uh, a lot like it was before. We need to check the Pygame event queue to see whether or not our primary mouse button has been clicked. So I'll just write this out again quickly. There we are, so exactly the same as before. Um, we have this mouse up variable which is false unless as we're going through the event queue, we find an event where the primary mouse button has been lifted up, and that's what we're using as a click in, in this application, effectively. We want to redraw the background to be blue again. Sorry. And then we're going to go through our buttons and update them. So for button and buttons, uh, we're going to call update. Remember again, we need to pass in the mouse position and whether or not the mouse up event has been triggered so our button class knows how to update itself. Sorry, that's pygame. Sorry, let's do that again. And we need to store the result of that. Again, just quickly go back, remember that if there's a click it returns an action. So I'll just call this UI action. Um, and then we're going to check. Um, so if it's not clicked, UI action is going to be none. So if UI action is not none, then we know we need to do something. And in that case this is just actually return this UI action. So when a button is clicked, we're actually going to return the UI action. That's one of these two from our buttons. So return that back to this game state variable here, which will then be checked again as we go through this main loop, which is really, you know, it's checking the state of our game and going to redirect us to the correct functions. Final thing here is just to remember to draw them, which we do as so, and to do the Pi game display flip. Okay, let's give that a go. I think our start button should should work now. Oh, I made an error. Oh, sorry. These of course should be uh, a check for equality rather than an assignment. There we go. Right, so quit button first. Great, seems to work fine. Start button. Okay, so as expected, the play level is not defined, so what happened there was uh, as we were looping through these buttons, we got the UI action associated with the start button, which is new game. And then on this uh, equality check here, this was true, and we and Python tried to call this play level function, which we haven't written yet. So we're going to write that now quickly, and that'll be the last thing we do in this in this part of the tutorial. So this is this is very very similar to um, to the previous function um, title screen that we just wrote. We're going to use a button for return to main menu and that's about all we're going to have in this level. 
So I'll just borrow one of these buttons from up here. And we'll call this return button because it's going to return us to the title screen. Um, I think we want to put this in the bottom left out of the way, so if we did actually have any level content, it wouldn't be blocking it. We're going to make it a bit smaller as well, because I think we're going to use quite a few words. We're going to have return to main menu here. So we don't want the button to be too big. Oops, menu. Oh, and of course we need to change this to be title, so that the action is correct for the button. And then we need to have our loop again. It's just like above. So I'm just going to borrow this from up here. We don't need a buttons collection anymore because we've only got one. We're only going to have one button on this level. Um, now, of course, we could do something a bit better than copy and paste this, and we will tackle that in the next part, which will be the final part, part four. Um, but at the moment, we're just going to copy and paste, and um, we'll clean it up later. So, like I say, very similar to before, we want to check whether or not the mouse button's clicked. We no longer have our collection, we just have a single button, so we want to get rid of that line there, fix the indentation, and we're just going to replace these buttons here, button calls here, because um, with, with return button. And OK, I think that should work now. So check the quit button, yep, quit button works fine. Check our start button, yep, we've got an empty level here just with a return to main menu button. And pushing that returns us to the main menu. Okay, so that's all for part three. I uh, hope you'll join us again for part four. Remember, you can subscribe to this channel for more videos. All of this content is also available on my blog, programmingpixels.com. Not every blog post I do becomes a video, so it is worth following me on Twitter or signing up to the blog's mailing list so you can get alerts. And I hope I'll see you for part four where we'll replace some of our drawing with uh, Pygame sprite renderers and we'll store some player attributes, things like uh, score, how many lives they have left and we'll also do a bit of tidying up so we don't have this copy-paste stuff going on.